Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge Bugman, and today's broadcast, we are going to talk about books. Um, that's right, man. We're talking about insect books, bug books, insect guides, field guides, whatever you want to call them. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman, and the reason they call me the Bugman, I go out to schools and churches and libraries and all those cool places, and I teach and educate people about bugs and insects. And we're in the studio today, and I'm bringing it to you. We're going to talk about books. Uh, look, there's a lot of emphasis being thrown out there about online resources. And don't, don't get me wrong, man. Online resources are very good. Um, some of us, you know, some of us 29-year-olds, however, still prefer a good book. Um, I find myself going back to books often. Um, specifically, the, the, the general books, the, the, the general guides that give me just quick, simple you know, information, mostly on ID or flight periods or even size. Those are the kind of things I really like a lot. We're going to talk about the three main types of books, and then we're going to finalize a whole day out by talking about my all-time favorite books. Um, and I think they're going to help you folks out a lot as well, because if you have kids or if you yourself, if you're just starting, if you're just pushing in and you're looking for some simple, you know, some gift ideas, or you're looking for some simple places to go that can get people information they need on insect identification or just general insects, we're going to talk about a whole slew of things. So we're going to talk about the three types of books that I find I have in my own libraries, and that is the books that I like and there's all of them. I like all of them. Um, there are the books that I need, and I need books for specific reasons, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then there are books that I actually use, and we're going to definitely look at the books that I use. Some of you can probably relate. Some of you out there have probably written some of these books, which is outstanding. So I'm going to give you folks some credit on the hard work that you yourselves have done. Um, something that I want to tap into, and, and just to let you know, I have some firsthand experience with books. I've been I've been writing and doing you know children's insect books now for about five or six years. It's totally awesome for me to be able to take what I do and then put it into you know hard you know hard uh, or in this case soft cover. Uh, education opportunity where these things get out, you know, they go out to schools and, and these are level one, level two books. These are starter reading guides, which is very, very cool because now not only am I helping kids to learn how to read, I'm also doing it in a way where I get to inspire them about insects and teach them how cool and important insects are while they learn to read. So I'm, I'm getting into those, you know, six and seven year old kids who are just really starting to plug in and that is perfect. That's, that's the age that I got into when I was with insects. So let's jump in here real quick because I got a lot of books I want to talk about and some we're going to just skim over quick and some of the other ones I'm going to spend a little bit of time on because I think they, they deserve the investment. Um, one book I want to talk to you about, and this is a book that I like. Um, cur you know, credit goes, kudos to Nancy uh, down in Costa Rica. She tapped into a bug pop-up book. Um, man, I didn't even know this thing was out there. She tapped into it and she told me, that I needed to get one of these. This is a great book, man. And look, every time you open up the page, you get you get a pop-up. What is there not to love about a three-dimensional cockroach that opens up into a book? This is what a cool book. What a fun book this is. And it's loaded with all kinds of little facts and little things. And check this out. You get all the way down there and check it. Now you have a three-dimensional scorpion. And you guys know me, man. I love a scorpion anytime, but in a pop-up book, are you kidding me? This is as cool as a book can get. If I were still a kid, and I kind of am, if I were still a kid, this would probably be my favorite all-time book, hands down, but instead it's one of my favorite all-time books, hands down. And yeah, I can read it and I can get a little bit of knowledge out of it, but it's just a fun book, and I highly recommend that. Pick these up on Amazon if you can get them. I was like a you know, three month waiting list when I had to try and get mine. I don't know what the deal is now. I haven't looked at them lately. But look, let's talk about coffee table books. I wouldn't consider that a coffee table book. That's the kind of book you keep around um, and take good care of that thing because that stuff starts to wear out. But coffee table guides uh, used to be a big thing when we all had coffee tables in our living room. And as a kid, I had a coffee table. I grew up with a coffee table. And my dad always had fishing books or he had books on Yellowstone or the places that he would like to travel. Um, 
Coffee table books are fun and they're they're always full of beautiful pictures and and now everything's gone digital so it's it's not illustrated you know like it used to be. These are all beautiful beautiful digital you know photographs. It's just an all around nice coffee table guide. You can find these things in books in bookstores in different places. You pick and choose your preference. Whether you like something that's just on general insects or whether you want to go something more specific, you know, like Butterflies of the World. That's another great one. Um, super book, just absolutely jam-packed with big, bright, colorful pictures. Tons and tons, in this case, tons of neat information. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily find myself using this book as a primary ID guide but I've found myself digging into this book to, to get specific or just, you know, some, some random identification um, from somewhere in the world. Because again, my problem is, and it's a really rough problem, trust me, my problem is that I have insects from all over the world. So I have to have books from all areas of the world in order to identify the insects that I'm collecting from. So I have lots of books from Africa and I have lots of books from South America, places that I've been where I have insects. You gotta have those guides. So coffee table books, always fun to have. Those are books that I like. Those are books that I think are just fun to look at and fun to read. And I find that kids will often pick those up and look at them. Um, and that's never a bad thing to have a kid, you know, digging into an insect book. Always a good thing. Um, if you want to get something a little more specific, there's a huge push right now on monarch butterflies. A lot of people out there raising and rearing monarch butterflies. And I'm guessing a lot of people that are rearing and raising those monarch butterflies still are probably lacking in some of the real internal in a real detailed knowledge they understand what they're doing they know the butterflies and they may not they probably know more about the rearing process of the butterflies than the actual family history or the life history of the bugs and and this book on milkweed butterflies outstanding book all right just an outstanding guide um i learned a ton of this back in the back in the 80s and 90s when i had this book um acre van right but um this is a British one, comes out of Comstock, Cornell University Press is what printed out. But either way, it's still a great book. Talks a lot about the real detail and the history and the processes within. Even goes into the, the internal parts and pieces of the monarchs or the uh, Danaids. So Milkweed Butterflies, definitely a good one. I like that book. So if you're one of those folks who is really into monarch butterflies or into those Danaids, that's a, a book that I would highly recommend. I don't look at it too much anymore because I've, I've burned through it, but I still find it, you know, a good one to recommend when people are looking. Classics. Um, books that you need. Classics are, are st we have these old moldy mothballed books laying around. Um, but in all honesty, man, one of, one of the probably best insect books that I got first time around when I was about seven or eight years old was the Holland Moth Guide. Uh, this is a very classic book, man. Um, <laughs> and most of you, most of you out there would probably recognize this book. Um, it's a great book, but it, it's very, very, uh, it's a lot for a kid, but it has these great illustrations. Um, and these might, these may have even been real pictures. Uh, one of the first books that I saw using real actual photographs um, but there's also a lot of illustrations built into this book as well. But the color plates are pretty good. And it gets down to some of the really small browns and grays. And, and that actually came in handy when I was young, when I needed to figure out what those were. So the Holland Moth Book is always a nice classic to have around. Um, never. I, I still use it, but not as often because I'll show you the ones I'm using now. Pretty simple stuff. Um, if you get into something a little more specific, you can get into one of the classics the beetle guides, um, these, you know, these manual common beetles, these things were around when I was a kid as well, so I had to have it. Um, and again, it, it gets into a combination of illustrations, um, and it probably, I think there was some really nice, there we go, some really nice color illustration as well. So, it's an older style book, not a digital, so don't expect to, you know, get the, the, the really clean cut pictures that we like so much. But those are just two of the classics um, that we have around. Now, when I got away from the the books that I like and I got into books that I needed, now we're talking, you know, I'm still seven, eight years old and I'm actually getting hands-on with a lot of bugs and insects, starting to travel outside of the yard and go catch bugs and really seriously, at seven, eight years old, I was seriously collecting insects. And I found 
that these great little Herbert Zim Golden Guides, man, um, I still to this day, I've been using these books since I was about seven or eight years old. I recommend these to every one of the families in the 4-H club that I talk to. Um, and there's four of them here. Um, obviously, you got the, in, the, the insects, the butterflies, moths, the insect pests, which came in handy many times, and another spider book. Um, spider books are great. We'll get into one of those a little bit later, but this is still probably one of my go-to spider guides. Everything is illustrated. There's no, you know, there's no hard photography, digital. This is all pre-digital stuff. Um, but still, these books, you know, if I had to go hands down to the book that I would recommend everybody has for a kid or somebody who's getting into starting out with insects, uh, these are the go-tos. And they don't, they're not, they're not region specific. These are books that are going to get you a general idea, a general look at some of the common species of different insects from all over the country. So good, good books, highly recommended. Herbert Zim Golden Guides. Um, look into those. And they're cheap, man. They only run about seven or eight bucks. So that's pretty awesome when you can find insect books for seven or eight bucks. Um, again, not an online thing. We're talking about going, going, into the, going into the books. Now, let's talk about something that's a little more advanced. Um, and this gets pretty specific, but these are books that I actually started picking up. Uh, I was a little younger at the time when I got this first one, but it came recommended. And, and ironically, Doug Yanega. Kudos to Doug Yanega. Longhorn Beetles. Um, it's Doug's Longhorn Beetle book, and, and for all I know, he has more of these, but th in all honesty, guys, this is, the, this is the only one of these that I have, and it is the only one that I've ever used. And, and truthfully, every Longhorn Beetle that I've, collect that I've personally collected in Pennsylvania and needed to identify was in this book. So, man, what a smashing great book this thing is. And Doug used real photography in this thing. So you get into some, I mean, it's a lot in here. And he hit just about all the Longhorn Beetles. Um, great book. And Pennsylvania, we get a, we still have a lot of forest up here. So we get a lot of Longhorns. We get a lot of those weird little things that show up. And it's nice to have a book like that. So Doug, well done on that one. Um, that's definitely one of my go-to guides for Longhorn Beetles. Tiger Beetles. Hands down, tiger beetles are, you know, one of the more beloved of the beetles out there. Um, anybody who likes beetles probably enjoys tiger beetles, or they're just totally addicted to them. This is a great guide. Uh, I'll put this one up here. This is one that some of you are going to see. Uh, some of you probably have it. I would hope most of you have it by now. It's just a great tiger beetle guide. And you know what, man? It has it has real plates. It's coming out. It's it's out of Oxford. It's it's uh, these guys Pearson. Nisley Duran, and, and uh, I can't even pronounce that guy's name, Keslick. But it's a great book. And again, it offers real pictures. And at the same time, it also offers forms and subspecies and color. You know, some of the color forms. Great book, man. Um, and that's my go-to tiger beetle book. And there are other tiger beetle books out there, maybe even better ones at this point. But the reality is, because I'm a general collector. I still go out and I, I collect tiger beetles whenever I bump into them. Rarely do I do I go on a tiger beetle hunting trip. We're going to do one of those broadcasts one of these days, but rarely do I actually go on a tiger beetle collecting trip specifically for those. But when I do find tiger beetles and I, and I collect them and bring them home, I'm going to need to identify them. So this book is my go-to for that because so far everything I've needed is in there. Um, Harry Zerlin took me to find a couple couple tiger beetles that I'd I, I had a hard time finding them in this book, but I know I know they're there. I just couldn't quite get it right. So Harry helped me out with those things. Um, backing away from that type of stuff, I want to I want to go um, into something that's a little more a little more serious about books. We're going to get into something that's a little more advanced. Um, this is this is where I would have probably reached into these when I was you know hit the fourteen to sixteen year uh, age limit and. And I was now looking at, you know, a lot more detail. Um, I was starting to drive and go look and, and expand my range and go look for things. So it helps to have some really good, solid books. Now, the the go-to all along for that type of thing was the Peterson Guides. Um, and I and I love these books in their day. They were, they're all illustrated. Um, these are old school books. They're all illustrated, but nice, beautiful color illustrations. Very well done. Um, and I love these books because of that. I could find almost everything I needed 
in a Peterson guide. Um, even if it was strictly a beetle, like you have the general insect guide, that's great. And they make a butterflies one too, believe it or not. Everybody does, don't they? But they also have the beetles and they also have, and this worked out really well, they have one for Western butterflies. Uh, most of these things have been revised once or twice already, which is also good. They're keeping up with the times, but so much has gone to online now that a lot of people have given up. A lot of these publishing companies have given up on books, which is terrible in my opinion, because I still like a good book. But the Western Butterflies, man, this one paid off big because, you know, I needed to go. I was hitting Yellowstone and I was out there in Arizona and I was going places and I didn't have any, I didn't have any field guides to get me those. Everything I had were for the Eastern U.S. You know, the Butterfly the Peterson guy from the Eastern U.S. So you didn't have that. Um, the new revised stuff that I go to now, and this is a, this is a great, great book. Um, and kudos to Eric Eaton, man. Eric, you, you, in all honesty, I'll be honest with, with everybody, man. Um, I found out Eric was you know, doing these books. He was, he was autographing them. He was selling autographed books. And I wanted one because I didn't have a Kaufman guide. So I wanted one. And it was super cool that I could get an autograph one from Eric Eaton. Um, this turns out to be now what is one of my biggest go-to guides. Um, and it's just a Kaufman Insects book. Eric, um, man, in my opinion, there, 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 might be, there might be better books out there. Uh, and I'm going to just be level with everybody. There might be a better insect guide out there. Um, there's probably things about this book that people aren't going to like. But look, man, I'm going to tell you something. I love this book. Um, and, and I've gotten to the point where I use this book and I use the Golden Guides and I use a Pennsylvania Butterfly book. Probably those three are my key go-to books now. Um, but this, dude, this is a great book. And I highly recommend it if you don't have, if you don't already have your favorite you know, general insect guide, uh, the Kaufman book coming out of Eric Eaton and his partners. They, they did a great job on that. So I want to, I would, I would recommend that one as well to anybody. Um, super books. Look, if you're looking to go a little more advanced than just generalized stuff, uh, Seabrook Leckie, um, out of Canada, which is kind of ironic, but Canadian hit this one out of the park, man. Um, Seabrook Leckie came down and she started doing moth books for North America. Um, and she, she specifically did them here in the East. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that she does something for out in the Western U.S. as well, because yeah, man. But we've got the moths of Northeastern U.S. and moths of Southeastern U.S. And these are big, thick books. They're loaded with all kinds of information. And she really smashed this one out with just a tremendous amount of color picks. Um, most of them are digital and, and they're just great guides. Um, so just about every moth that I collect in, in the Eastern US, I now can identify it um, right down to the little ones. And I don't even collect the little ones, but if I needed to, they're in those books. So Seabrook did a great job with those. So huge kudos to her as well. I talked about the, the regional books um, in, regard, in regards to the fact that I like a good Pennsylvania. I live in Pennsylvania, so I, I need to know what's here. And sometimes, you know, the as much as I like the Herbert Zim guides, this is this 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 was my used to be go to kind of thing, and it still is a go to for some specific quick you know quick info. But right now, my favorite go to on Pennsylvania butterflies would be this one. Um, great, great book. It it is outstanding, and it's you know I, I can't I can't speak too many. <laughs> I love this book, man. Right now, I think I'm addicted to it. And Jim Monroe did a great job on it. And it's just an outstanding book. And it's it's all digital and tons of life history. Highly recommend. If you live in Pennsylvania, if you live in Maryland, if you live, you know, if you live in that tri-state area and you're looking for a great regional book, pick yourself up the Pennsylvania Butterflies. Um, it will come with some revisions. So there are there are a couple corrections they made in it, and that's perfectly fine too. And uh they even they even got a little Funky with the the I think so it makes it maybe even it's more of a collector edition now because of that I don't know but it's pretty fun yeah the little correction on the spine is pretty cool they but look whether if you don't live in Pennsylvania if you live elsewhere you're probably maybe Missouri you know there's a great book maybe you live in Indiana um, there's one from Ohio there's books from Virginia everybody has their books um this was a man great book love this book Butterflies of Oregon you know. Just a, just a phenomenal book. 
Um, an older school book, but still done with digital pics, which was kind of nice. Almost all black and white, which was kind of weird. There's some color in here, but not a lot of color. It's almost all black and white. Um, I, I, all, I probably had this book in my lap uh, for 12 days while I was in Oregon and Washington and Nevada on a collecting trip one year. Uh, I want to say 87 or 88. And, and I kept this book with me in the vehicle on my lap almost the entire time because I was constantly going in. There was like eight or nine different types of fritillaries and then there was three or four different types of, you know, the, the, the Indras and there was just a collage of different butterflies out there that I had no idea what I was getting into. And to have a good, solid, on-hand reference guide, because guess what, man? You can't always get Wi-Fi when you're in the mountains. You, sometimes you're gonna need a good book, man. So, I know everybody likes their online resources, but if you can't get online to start looking up some of these, you know, some of these IDs and some of these resources, you're going to wish you had a good book. So, yep, you're probably going to be thinking a little differently about it if you didn't. If you don't like books before, maybe you should start liking them a little more now. Now, off the, you know, completely off the grid, you're going to get into the spiders. And I did tap into, um, I did tap into the Herbert guide, the spiders guide, which again, still probably a good go-to. Uh, whether you whether you're a starter, you know whether you're a beginner at this whole thing or not, the spiders and their kin is a great one. It gets into scorpions and centipedes and stuff. And just about everything where I live in Pennsylvania is probably in this book. And if it's not a specific, it's going to get me to the family. In a lot of cases, that's all people really want to know. Um, other than the, is it going to bite me? Is it going to kill me? They're just kind of wondering what kind of what kind of spider it is. So if it's not a black widow or a brown recluse, I find people settle down and chill out real quick. But you know what? If you're going to put a book out about spiders and you want to get people's attention, put a Black Widow on the front of it, man. That is a great way to sell a book. Um, and uh, look, it's old school. It's mostly black and white. Um, there are some really cool digital pics in here, which are nice. Um, I don't know which one is going to do better. Um, and, I, and this is probably one of the few times I would tell you that if you have an online resource specific to where you live or wherever you find the spider that you're trying to trying to ID, um, books are good, but the online resources I'm finding out nowadays are a lot easier to locate identification of spiders. So you get it, man. That's just a quick rundown. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with you guys today. I'm not going to burn it up. But I do want to get back to my favorite all-time books because people always ask me. I get I get questions all the time about, about what book would you recommend for my child. And I don't recommend books for children as much as I recommend books for starters and beginners because we can all start a new hobby at any time in our lives. So even at 29 years old, um, which I'm not. But anyway, even at, even at my age... I still like the good, these Herbert Zim Golden Guides are still my favorite books and I still use them regularly. And honestly, that's a, that's true. But I still really, really have found myself, I'm sort of addicted right now to Eric Eaton, uh, his his Kaufman Guide that he threw out there. Um, and the other guy that's here too is, is you know, there's more people than just one, but you got Eric Eaton and Ken Kaufman. Um, but most of you, most of you probably know just through the name of Ken Kaufman was it was you know formerly with this book. But still, man, giving kudos where it's a great book. Um, if you don't have it, you probably should get it because uh, I think you'll use it. So if you're not really into those online resources and you're looking for good books, there's a lot of choices out there. Find something specific to your region. Find something that you know you're going to be able to get because you can't always get online. You can't always get Wi-Fi when you think you need it. Sometimes when you most need it is when you can't get it. So look into some nice affordable books, whether it's for your kids, whether it's because they're starting or getting in. You're looking to inspire. You're looking to instill young children. Uh, go to willbooks.com and find my books there. If you're, you know, if you're looking for something that's very, very affordable, um, uh, hit me up if you can. I don't always have them on hand. Though. The publisher doesn't always get me books when I wish I had them. They keep them in their warehouse and they try to keep Try to keep control of that stuff. So there you go, man. Um, if you want any information on any of these specific books, if I didn't if I didn't throw enough at you, and you want more of that information, guys, hit me up in the comments and let me know, uh, and I will tap in. If you yourself have particular books that you would like to you know toss out there and make sure that that you want to recommend to people, you got your favorite books, whatever they are, put those in the comments as well. 
Uh, let's all work together on this one. And, and by the time we're done, I think we could probably come up with an entire library worth of books that we could all say are awesome. Because, you know, you can't always get online. I don't want to keep pushing that as hard as I can. All right, guys. Hey, look, man. Um, you can find us over on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram. Uh, definitely like and subscribe. And like my son likes to say, tap that bell. Um, so find us over there, man. Tons of cool content there. And guys, I'm going to let you have your day back. Early dismissal today. How cool is that, man? Not so bad. All right, guys. Look, be well, be safe, be kind. All right, man. Take it easy. Have a great day. We'll see you.